Participation means action, and action means engagement. Whether we're in person or remote, in a classroom or meeting, whether it's before the meeting to prep everybody, whether it's during the meeting, or whether it's after the meeting, we want to make sure that we have ways of getting our audience to actually do something so that they're actually engaged with the content that we're presenting. Well, we can do that by using a tool called Padlet. Let's go take a look. To get to Padlet, all I need to do is go to Padlet.com and it'll take me to their website. And the fact that it's a web-based application is very useful because it means I don't need to worry if students have a Mac or a PC or a Linux system or some device. As long as it has the ability to go to a web page, I can get to the Padlets. Now you'll notice when I go here, I've already logged in. So the first time you visit Padlet, you'll register an account. You do not have to pay for Padlet. It is free. You can create up to, I believe, three Padlets for free in order to test the product and get, get used to it. I tend to use it a fair amount, so for me, it was definitely worth getting the Pro account, which isn't very expensive on a per month basis. If you go down below, I'll put a referral link there where you can actually click there to get to Padlet. So underneath here, I do have the Pro account, and you'll notice that I have some options along the side. I can look at my recents, I can look at things I've made, shared with me, liked Padlets and archived Padlets. And one of the features I really like here is I can put folders into play. And those folders are going to allow me to make, make a folder for each class that I'm teaching or some icebreaker activities, some fun activities. I have post-class, pre-class activities. One of the things I really like to do with Padlet is before the class even starts is to send the students a link to the Padlet and have them start engaging in a conversation before the class. It could be something like, what are you hoping to get out of the class? It could be an introductory thing where I have a low risk interaction activity, such as what's your favorite animal or do you have a pet? Do you want a pet? Those types of things. You don't want to get too personal here, but you can go in and have something that's fun for them to do, but gets them knowing each other a little bit in advance. So I've got this YouTube folder that I've created and you'll notice I haven't put any padlets in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go in and make a padlet. When I make the Padlet, I have some options of the different types of Padlets that I'm going to use. Each of these has a unique capability, and just in this demonstration, I'm not going to show you all of them, but a wall is one where we have sort of this brick-like wall. We can just post things up there. Each of the posts is separate from each other. You can preview it. So this is what it might look like. So you can see that I've got all of these different comments in here with images and such. I'll be showing you how to do that. So let's close that one down. I can have a stream, which is really useful where one post follows the other. So that's great for like a threaded conversation, a shelf where I set the topics. That's a useful one as well. Lots of different ones and you can preview all of them. The map is a fun one. If you want to have, for example, a icebreaker activity, what's your favorite place to visit? or you know, where, where's your favorite place in the world. So you have a lot of different options there. I'm going to go ahead and let's create a wall. So I'll just create a standard wall Padlet. And the folks at Padlets obviously have a sense of humor. So what they'll do is they'll put a random background here, the random name in there and a random description. So I'm gonna change it from my luminous Padlet to demo for YouTube. So this particular Padlet will be a demo. And one of the things I do recommend is in the description, put some you know ideas of what the Padlet's about and what your expectations are for the participation. Like, you know, post an image of a pet, for example. I'm just gonna put demo in there and then that's going to allow me to have that. I'm gonna go into the icon. We'll go into the icon. I have a whole bunch of icons I can choose from. So let's say, for example, this is going to be, let's, let's introduce you to your favorite pet or favorite animal. So underneath here, I could search and maybe I want for my Padlet to have a little cat image up here in the corner. That might be perfectly fine for what I'm doing, but you get so much more choices. You can create your own icons and it's a little bit misnamed. It's not just an icon that you put up there. You can paste a link up there. You can take a photo and put it there from your camera. You can draw. I can't draw, but maybe you can draw. I could upload an image that I have and I can even search. So underneath here, let's search for a dog. So we'll search for a dog and there's a picture of a happy dog. That's going to be my pet demo for YouTube there. Now I'll have a unique link for the Padlet that people can use. You'll notice it's pretty randomized. So I can copy that to the clipboard. And then when I copy that to the clipboard, I can send that out. Anybody with that link will be able to come into this Padlet. But don't worry, we can control what they can put in there. I'll show you that in a moment as well. 
Underneath the wallpaper, if I go here, I can choose solid colors, gradients, textures, patterns, pictures. I can upload my own wallpaper. So for this one here, I'm just going to put in sort of a, a nice generic background here that, that's not too, well, maybe we'll put some nice, I like that, that there. So we'll put that in there. So I can put textures and patterns in there. I can upload my own wallpaper if I want to do that as well. Lots of options around the wallpaper. We can also choose a dark or a light color scheme and we can choose different fonts. A good example is if I'm dealing with a younger audience, I might want to have a little bit more of a cartoony type font here, a little bit more fun, a little more relaxed. Uh, if we go in here underneath posting, this gives me control of what I can do this. So uh, in terms of who put the post there, so I can display the author name above each post. When I do that, anybody with a Padlet account, their name will appear on their post. So for example, with myself, my name will appear on any Padlets that I put up there any notes that I put up there. This is something that will work if everybody has a Padlet account. So we have different names on there. If you're in an environment where a lot of people, for example, students are coming in with anonymous accounts, that's what will appear on their Padlet, anonymous. So what I'll often ask my students to do is I'll say, you don't need to register for an account. Don't worry about that. Come into my Padlet, but put your name as part of the description of what you've posted. I'll show you that again in a minute as well. And then with this particular one, I can choose where do my posts appear? Do I want the first one and then the last one, or do I want the last one, the latest one, and then the first one? So we can, we can put this here. I can allow comments on the Padlet so people can comment and we can even have reactions so people can like my pet post or they could vote up or down on my pet post or they can give it one to five stars or they can give me a grade. When, when with our pet little example here, we're just going to, you like the pet or you, you know, you leave it alone. I can also require approval. If I'm going to do a Padlet that's going to be sent out to a public environment like a Facebook or somewhere where I feel that the URL could leak into the public sphere, one of the things I may wish to do is require approval. Generally speaking, what I can do is change this after the fact. So when I'm doing it as an in-class activity, a lot of times what I will do is make it so it does not require approval. So everybody can just start throwing their ideas into this Padlet. But then what I'll do is go back and edit it. So any subsequent posts would require approval. So I don't get a leaked URL with somebody coming in and doing sort of jokes in there and stuff and messing up our Padlet. I will also filter profanity most all the time. In this case here, it'll replace the bad words with, with emojis. I generally don't make that public knowledge because otherwise people will want to test it out. So you'll see a whole bunch of Padlets with emojis in there. And then underneath advanced, I can map that out to a, a domain. So we'll go to our next feature here and we'll start posting. That's how simple it is to create a Padlet. You should see how simple it is to post to a Padlet. Here's how you do it. And this is what really I think makes this product so brilliant is that I can just direct students to my Padlet. All they do is once they log in, they just click this plus sign. And once they click that plus sign, they have all of these different options of what they can do. They could put a subject in here, like for example, my dog, right? And then they could put something like, I like my dog. This is very complex, but this is the real key these icons in the middle here, because I can actually go in and I can upload a picture of my dog. I could take a picture of my dog. If it's maybe a dog's harder to capture or a cat, usually they're on your keyboard. So you can just take a picture right there. You can go in here and link. So you could post a link to something. Maybe you have a whole blog about your dog, or you could go and do a search for an image. So for example, I don't have a picture of my dog on my computer right now. So I'll go in and search for a dog that looks like my dog. So I had, I had a Husky. So I had a little Husky dog and, uh, well, she was a pretty big Husky dog. She wasn't a purebred. She was a half wolf, half dog, but she looked exactly like this. So I'll go ahead and I'll upload that image. It takes a few moments to upload. And then once that image is uploaded, it becomes part of my post. So now I've got this here and I can add a caption, say not my dog, but looks the same except my dog was the prettiest dog in the world. This is a pretty dog, but my dog was much prettier. And then I can change the background of that post to different colors. So for example, green, this won't take effect until I hit publish. When I hit publish, now I have my dog as the post here on my Padlet wall. Let's do another post quickly because I'll show you there's many more options. So I'll say my 
guinea pig. So my guinea pig. So I have a couple of guinea pigs and uh, these are cute. Once again, I don't have the image of my guinea pig handy on my computer. I don't want to browse for it. But what I can do is I can go into this more button here and notice I could put in things like I could do an audio recording. Maybe I want to do an audio of my my pigs making a, their weaking sound. Uh, I could again camera. I could record a portion of my screen. I could even refer to another Padlet. I could do a video recorder. So many different options here. And then of course you can link, do an image search, uh, uh, GIFs in there. You could grab YouTube. So let's say, for example, I want to create a, I want to search YouTube for, um, there's a famous YouTuber that does guinea pig videos called, um, Little Adventures, really great channel if you like guinea pigs. So I'll do Little Adventures in there. And this is, there we go, guinea pigs. So I now I'm going to post in that YouTube link and now you'll be able to see we have a guinea pig in there and that becomes my next post in there. So you can see I'm starting to get a really nice little padlet here that you know, students can start contributing to, they can read other people's uh, posts, they can watch a little video that somebody thought was important for them to watch, audio recording, whatever the case may be. If I go back to Padlet here, let me just go into uh, my folder business intelligence and let me grab this. Here's an example of an activity. This is what remains after the activity was done. I went in and I created a bunch of posts here on different types of, uh, uh, team members or different types of stakeholders in a business intelligence project. Then I asked my students or during the class in this case to go in and talk, take some of these and talk about how they would use business intelligence. Then people could go in and like them. People could come in and they could comment on them, right? So you can go in here and have all sorts of interaction where people are liking, commenting, they're going in, they're putting ideas in there. These, this is a free flow one. So this is the canvas one where I can move things around. I find this useful if I want to, for example, go in and I want to start putting uh, grouping together some of the padlets. So let's say I'm trying to have a conversation saying, okay, everybody put your ideas and let's bring them into groups and see what's similar and what's not similar. So this is the, the use of the canvas one. Now, I also use this in class, in person, or when I'm facilitating a meeting. Because imagine, I can project this website onto the whiteboard or onto the screen, the projector screen. And then what I can do is instead of students having to come up with sticky notes and put them onto the whiteboard and then group things together, they can use their device or their computer and they can participate from their seat and put information that everybody can start sharing. We can start commenting on things. We can start grouping things together. So, and it also prevents, especially in the case of an academic environment, some students are very intimidated to come up to the front of the classroom and do something. This actually allows them to participate without the necessity of having to get up from their seat, grab a sticky note and put that onto the whiteboard. Not only that, but if I have remote students, if a hybrid environment exists where I have some folks remote, some folks in person or completely remote environment, I can get that participation no matter where somebody is ge ge um, geographically. Now, if I go in here, let's go back to Padlet here. And I'll go back to my YouTube one here. So we have my YouTube one. Um, actually, I must have, let's go to recents and let's grab that demo for YouTube. I didn't put it in the folder. So one of the things I can do is I can go in here and I can do things like I can invite people, I can embed it. You'll notice that I can modify it, change the format of it. So if I don't like this particular format, I want to go to a canvas type format, then I can change the format. In my case, one of the things I do like to do is I'll have something like the format where I have the wall. Everybody puts their padlets on the wall. Then I'll change the format to a canvas where I can move and stack different thoughts together. So that's a great way to do that as well. You can clear the posts. Um, you can remake it. So one of the things you can do is basically take like a copy of it and rebuild the Padlet in there. So if I go to remake, we can go in here and we can copy the design of it but not the posts, or I can copy the design and the posts. So there's a lot of things that you can do there to basically make a copy, but a copy that meets your needs. So one of the things that I will do is I will create a starting point Padlet. Then when I'm ready to use that activity, I'll remake it. I'll copy the design and the post that I've put on there, but it'll be a new Padlet. So the idea is that acts like a template for me. 
So let's close this. The other things I can do here is I can share it. And it's not just your typical share, like share out the link. You can copy the link, but look at all the different ways you can share it. You can share it by email. You can put a QR code, put it in your website, so many different ways. And if you're using Microsoft Teams as your learning platform, where your classroom is, something I like to use, then I the Padlet can actually be integrated right into Microsoft Teams. So it's, it's right there, either as a link, obviously, but you can actually integrate the Padlet right into Teams. You can then export it out with all of these. So let's say we've done a brainstorming session on, you know, let's say we've decided we're going to get a classroom pet and everybody's sort of doing padlets of why we should get guinea pigs or a hamster or a snake or a tarantula, right? And usually that comes down to whether the teacher is willing to take a tarantula home over the summer or whether they're willing to take guinea pigs home over the summer. But anyways, so the idea is, but this, the class is participating and what we can do is export that out as a CSV and we can have a list of all of our different uh, animals that we think we should have as a classroom pet. You can ex uh, save it as an Excel spread. There's so much you can do there. So this is a great brainstorming tool because because you have all of those different export um, uh, features available to you. As you can see, Padlet is a simple yet effective way to create an activity to engage our audience and our classes. I'd be interested in knowing whether you're using Padlet or if you plan to use Padlet, comment down below. And if you like other technology tips on how to use technology for learning and teaching, then go ahead and subscribe and share and like this video if you want with other colleagues. That'd be great. It really helps out the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.